She's the first one to actually talk ball, talk ball, like sit in the room with the fellas. Where does that come from, knowing a game like that? I grew up in Pittsburgh. Mm. Oh my oh. God. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Pittsburgh. So they don't know. They don't know this. Yeah. Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson from Pittsburgh. 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 He from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. People don't know that. Yeah. Hey, you, you, you people from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's from Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm from LA. From the hill. I'm talking like, like these at where you at? Like, yo, yo. Pittsburgh. What the f? Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson in that type of neighborhood. He got more family than Pittsburgh. People don't know that. So when you was out there, it's LA. Cause cause that. We had to fight to get a meal, yeah. Wrongfully accused, we had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know. Spike, spike your skills, fat. Keep it riding for the fam, you gotta like the we get wheels straight up. But in the past, bad, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah, and my family needed bread, I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. I had to run to the gas station, grab me some of these Celsius, right? You got a deal on these uh, four for one? Jerry, can you hear me? I was asking what flavors you want. They got the watermelon. Is that a package deal? No, because I like the peach. You want two grapes? I, I'm going to get the peach. They got a grapefruit, right? And these help you burn fat, too. And it's essential energy, so essentially it's, it's, it's good for you. Ain't no preservatives in it. Really, they got anything you want. They got an orange pomegranate, too. Jerry. Yeah. Two more of these, two more games. That's a double dribble. It's a double dribble. This game and then we on? Okay. What's up, what's up, what's up? you good? All right, y'all on next? Okay. On this episode of I Am Athlete, I don't know what episode it is, but we're having a legendary conversation with Legend. one of the best in the business. When you think about a communicator, when you think about sports, there's some dynamic voices. American media personality on multiple shows right now on Speak on FS1. Welcome to the show, Joy Taylor. And why you didn't say my teammate? Oh, and also Shady oh, McCoy's oh, teammate. Oh, oh, Let's oh, start oh, there. Oh, let me go. go, go, go. go. You work. Oh, oh, we exactly oh, right oh. Shady teammate. I'm, yes. Well, I've been doing some Googling, and I told you earlier, I'm quite, I'm not a fanboy, but I am a fanboy. Anyway, you've worked with some of the hardest uh, people to work with. Um, Skip and other names. I ain't going to go down. Let's Shannon. And Shady. I want to know. I'm a, I'm in hold on, group. hold on. <laughs> I want, this is a two-part question. I want to know, what is your zen to work with all these people like Shady? And how is Shady like? How, do you, how, how is he as a coworker? Uh, well, first part, um, I don't know. I don't really have a problem with, with working with people. I just try to meet people where they are. And when you're dealing with big personalities, Skip, Shannon, Colin, and I've worked with lots of other big personalities as well, I don't want to go to work frustrated or annoyed with the people that I'm around. So I just meet people where they are. This is who you are. Cool. I'm going to be how I am. As long as we're professional, what's the problem? Right. Doing a daily show is a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It is. So I can't imagine coming in irritated to be around someone. It's like coming home and being mad. Like, I'm, right. nah, I'm good. So meeting people where they are and presenting as yourself every day and just treating people with respect, respecting what they do, makes it much easier to me, especially dealing with big personalities. Second part, uh, yes. Shady. <laughs> My baby. Be honest to you. Yeah. Listen. Be honest. This is what we do in this process. We keep it honest. Yeah. Keep it real? Keep it yeah, real. Yeah, That's all yeah, we do. Keep that keep real. Real. Like she said, keep it real. <laughs> no, Shady is honestly one of the easiest people I've ever worked with. No bullshit. What? Shady is never in a bad mood. You know, no, nah, he's not. He's, he's never in a bad he's mood. He's super low maintenance because he don't know that he could be high maintenance yet. <laughs> and like know. low key, I be encouraging him. Don't, like, Yo, please you don't, don't tell her he could be high maintenance though. She <laughs> OG, though. Don't you don't have to do that <laughs> all the time. I'm trying to turn him into a monster. He is really easy to work with. He's happy all the time. He's really not trying to for real argue. As soon as stuff actually starts to get tense, Shady's like, no, I'm good. Anyway, <laughs> where are we going for dinner? Right. Just change it. Just change it up. 
It happened at, at dinner the other night. Oh, that's right, yeah. We started getting tense, and he was like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> So Shady's actually very easy to work with. I I feel like he's easy to work with. Wow. Well, look, got you on the show. Let's talk about you. When you do this type of work, right, the way I look at it is like, what's your seat? How do you define your seat? Mm. And it's interesting for us as athletes transitioning into TV, we kind of know our seat. Oh, you're going to get the, the player's perspective. I feel like women in media, you guys are host. Sit back, mm. put the men in position. Um, and I don't know what your seat is, but can you define your seat for us and then explain kind of like your journey, where you started, where you're at today, how you got there? Did you have to fight to get to this position? Feel good about where you at? Is there more meat on the bone? Well, that was my seat for a long time. I was a host, a moderator, uh, hosted with Colin, but obviously it was Colin's show. And now my seat is the same as everyone else on yep. the shows. Yep. And that was always my goal, to get to a point where I wasn't um, teeing up other people for their opinion, which is a great role to do and a powerful role to be in and an important role, but that's not what I wanted to do. So when I got in the business you know, 15 years ago, a long time ago, this wasn't a thing. It wasn't, you, like, it was YouTube, but it wasn't what it is now. Twitter wasn't what it is now. You didn't have Instagram Lives. You didn't have all these platforms and podcasts and ways to really express yourself and be a personality and give your opinion. It was really just the opinion shows on the biggest networks and radio. Mm. And I always loved radio because it was the original format to talk, which I wanted to do. I really never wanted to be a reporter. I never wanted to be a, a hardcore journalist because I hold them in a special place. Like I think if you're a journalist, you have a really specific role in society, even as a sports journalist, because you're supposed to be unbiased. Mm. Like you're just supposed to give us the information, yeah. tell us the news. You're not putting your spin on it. Now that's, that's changed a lot, <laughs> yeah. but there are still some of them out mm. there. And I, I, I have that, a lot of respect for that position in our space. So I never really wanted to be that. I'm spoiled. I like sitting in the studio. It, I'm not into all this weather stuff. So like the <laughs> sidelines, it's exciting and you're a part of history, but that's, that's never what I wanted to do. So the, for me, I knew that the way to get into that side of the business at that time was to do radio because mm. that was the long format platform. And that's, that's how I started. So I started interning in radio. Uh, I was a, part-time producer in radio, and then moved up as an executive producer, and then eventually got an opportunity to host a radio show in Miami. So that was how I started in the business, and that's why I got in on that side. Now, now, so we worked together, obviously. We talked about that. And um, I'm gonna be honest. So she's like my OG on, on the media space, right, right? Like how we do in ball. Explain that. Like, so, so okay, in football, for the viewers for football, it's OGs like that that put their time in before you. You're a young rook. So now I'm with Fox, mm -hmm. but speak, I'm a rookie, and Joy's like the vet. So there's times I might ask her a little question like, yo, can I do this, can I do that? Or how, how should I say this? Um, and then she talked about like, I'm low maintenance because I'm thinking of myself as a rookie, where she can get away with stuff. Look, I ain't coming to work today, such and such, where I can't do that yet. <laughs> but I want to give her her flowers because um, I'm going to be honest, as men, right, when we talk on football, you know, if, it's, if let's say you're a gr your girlfriend or your your mom, right? Because your mom, I know your mom very well. She's a football lady. All right. She, the football game's on, and, and and you see a play, and she see a play. She see it differently than you see it. For sure. You're like, man, what? Right. Because you think your opinion's right. So with her, I gotta be honest. She's the first woman, right? That actually, I remember listening to her takes. We like a production meeting, and let's say the topic is Aaron Rodgers, because that's always the topic, or Cowboys. And I'm saying like, damn. Yeah, she knows she talked about. Right. You remember what I told you when I, when I got with her? Yeah. I see, she's the first one to actually talk ball, talk ball, like sit in the room with the fellas. So that's I want to give you your, your, your flowers for that. Two questions I got. One is where does that come from? Because most people would say, oh, well, her brother was a freaking Jason Taylor was a he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Is it from that, or where does that come from knowing a game like that? Well, thank you, Shady. That's very nice to say. Um, I grew up in Pittsburgh. Mm. Oh my. Right. Heart. God. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on. So they don't know. They don't know this. Yeah. Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. 
Pittsburgh. He from 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 Pittsburgh. He I am. Yeah. They wrapped the babies in terrible towels at the hospital. You're, it's like a cult. That wasn't right. <laughs> it's, not, it's not your choice. It's not your choice. I grew up around. I grew up around women who just talked about sports. My grandmother, my aunts, every every woman around me talked about sports, watched sports, and the game is on. We're watching the game. It's like it's not a question. Like, what are you doing on Sunday? What the are you doing on Sunday? <laughs> Steeler game is on. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Right. You weird or something? So I, it was really genuinely not my experience growing up as a woman to not watch sports, to not know what's going on with the teams, to not care. I played sports growing up, so I had that competitive passion in me already. I played basketball, soccer, volleyball, and I ran track, and I ran track in college. So that, like being, I was really a jock. Like I was always, I liked being in the gym, not so much anymore, I'm a Pilates girl now, but that was, that was just in me really from birth, considering where I grew up and what I just did as a child. I have brothers too, and a big family. Anyone who has a big family knows yelling is a form of affection. Yes, yes. And it's just how we mm -hmm. communicate. Physical so I think, yeah, I think all those things just played a role in that. Now, now he talked about like the traditional way with females, they always get the host. The host, and then they pass it to right. the ball players or the, the guys. Um, it's very few females, right? You, you might be the only black opinionist on TV. Why is it not is more that, of them? Is it? Come on, man, I know what I'm talking, you know what I mean? I just, you know, I do this. Remember we had this conversation with Carrie when we had Champion on here yeah, but about how hard it is for them. But, but, but why is and that, that would be my question, like, how hard is it? For you. <laughs> he just took it. <laughs> Hold on, <up>, Pat. <laughs> if I ask a question, don't ask the same question. <laughs> for future reference. Sorry about that. <laughs> Look, I have to go through this. They got a whole blooper tape that I have to I have to agree to this. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. I gotta stop. No, bro. wait, wait. How hard? Check his weed. <laughs> check his weed. Check his weed. Jeez. Sorry, Joy. Sorry about that. Answer whatever question. It's the same one. It's whatever one. <laughs> That's my brother, though. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What's the question? What, no, why is it not more? I mean, I think I think visibility is is one thing. You know, you have to see things to believe they're possible. Mm. So we know representation and how important that is for everyone. Yeah. For me, uh, Jamel was the first one that, oh, the first woman right. I yeah. at all to, to really be there giving an opinion, having a show, and the first black woman. And she really made me believe it Jamel was Hill, possible. Right? Jamel Hill, yeah. yes. Yeah. She made me believe it was possible because everyone else on television that was just talking about sports, giving their opinion, was a man. Mm. And so for her, to have that space and have her show and it be as big as it was, was really important for me. And then there was just a gap for a long time. And it's not just for women wanting to get into that space and, and be in that space, because I, 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 there's plenty of women who want to give their opinion about sports. Yeah. And I keep saying opinion because it's different. It's a different job. It is. It's a different job than doing play-by-play. -play. It's different than doing sidelines. Uh, side it's different than being a moderator. You get asked a question, you answer the question just the same as everybody else at the table. It's a different job. I think it's hard for executives to, to see women in that space also. So that's why so I feel a lot of responsibility, uh, honestly, to not f*** it up. Because there's, not, there's just not a lot of opportunities in that space. Well, let me ask you this, because I had an opportunity also to be on FS1 and sit with you at times for an entire year, and I was blown away as, as well, not just because of like your opinions, but I mean, you're just super talented, right? You get, there's a skill and an art to it. And I remember having some conversations with you offline, and long story short, I was like, oh, shit. like she had to sacrifice a lot. She had to fight a lot to get mm -hmm. here, right? So can you maybe put, like, you know, yeah, yes, right? Because you're sitting here, 
And I'm gonna throw this question out here for you right now so you can marinate on it and ask and, and answer it later. But do you feel like you've made it, right? You're here now, you went to radio 15 years. Now your opinion matters, it's equal. What did you have to sacrifice? A lot of times people see us make it to the league. A lot of times people see us sitting here, but they don't know what we had to do to sacrifice. sacrifice. So what I'm trying to get you to do is tell us, you know, get, put me in a room where you had to push back on the executive and say, no, I'm going this way. I'm good enough to do that. Uh, well, I don't, I, don't, I mean, I could tell you specific stories for the next three hours, but I think for me, I always knew exactly what I wanted to do. So you're gonna get told no a lot. Wow. Sometimes it's not even gonna be no. It's like we're not even listening to this. Like this is not even oh, an option. Not even for you. Yeah, like this is, this is not even an option for you. You're not good enough. We don't do that. The opportunity's not there. You don't know how hard this is. I, I've been literally told I don't know how hard it is to do a daily show while I was working on a daily show. I'm like, you mean the show I currently work on? I don't know how hard it is to do that. The same meeting I'm in every day, the same wake up call, same time. How would I not know how hard it is to do the show I work on? You have to constantly reaffirm that you are good enough, that you belong there, and then always prove it. So I would just always say you have to, you gotta do twice the work to get half the opportunity, but hmm. that, to me, the mentality I've always had on it is that just gonna make me better. So that's why I'm excellent. Mm. Because I had to be. I couldn't be average, I couldn't be okay, I couldn't be late, I couldn't complain, I couldn't say no. Now I do. Right, right. <laughs> but you have to do that because you can't give people the opportunity to doubt you. Mm. So that I think is what the sacrifice is. It's a lot of pride sacrifice, you gotta eat a lot of you gotta listen to a lot of jokes. You gotta <laughs> ignore little comments, little microaggressions. Uh, then, uh, and that kind of leads into my, my next question. What, what do you feel like defines you and where do you get your fire from? Like growing up, you know, being Jason Taylor's, you know, younger, older sister? Younger. Know, younger. Obviously, he's a legend in my eyes, one of the best DNs that ever played the game. I loved how he played the game. So I'm sure that you know, the fire comes from probably your background and your history, but like, what, what do you feel like definitely defines you in this business with you being a young black female and this being a hard industry to even work in around nothing but dominant men? Well, I grew up in an abusive household. Mm. So I think I have a innate fear of relying on anyone else mm. That's big. for survival. Right. So I sort of apply that to maybe in an unhealthy way to everything yeah, sure. that I do we in all, life. Like we all come from there, right? Right. So in my career, I always have this anxiety that it's not enough or that it's not good enough or that it could all Strive just go best. away. Right. So I never really get complacent. It's not that I don't take the moments to enjoy things or be in the moment or appreciate accomplishments, but it's very Strive fleeting because it's sure. like, and I, I think athletes particularly can relate to that. Like you reach the top and then you're like, all right, you gotta do it again. What's yeah, next? Yeah, What's yeah, next yeah. season, yeah. next training camp. Gotta stay healthy. You gotta get next back show, at it. Get back in the game. gym. Right. right. So I think um, I think that is what keeps me in that space is just that constant anxiety that that I'm all I have, even mm -hmm. if I'm not. Like right. I know I very much rely on other people. I'm not afraid to ask for help. Mm -hmm. All of those things, but. It's just, that is, I think that's an uh, anxiety that doesn't really leave you, or it hasn't left me yet. But I don't know if I want to lose it it's either. It's a great trait to have, though. It's a great trait. Why, why do you say that? I mean, we all come from now. I feel like when I say we all come from now, I feel like I can speak for the three men in this room that's sitting at this table because, you know, everybody might have came up with different privileges, but we all came from really nothing. I know my parents didn't really have too much, so I was the bread running out the family. But I knew my dad had me to make it to the league because he ain't making it. He wanted a kid to make it. So I'm putting all his struggles and all the faults and the trauma that I saw my dad go through and it's invested into me. And now when I go out there, I got to prove my folks right. Because if I don't prove my folks right, that's a rep representation of me. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So we all carry that. You can say stress, baggage, trauma, hurt, fear. Like, what are we going to do next? Right. I ain't, it's, it's either me or you and I ain't going. Right. I'm trying to feed my family. So. Right. I think that's the mentality we all have. 
Lamar Jackson made the best business decision. I blame the Ravens for him not going out there. If they wanted him out there, they should have paid him. They didn't pay him, and that's their own fault. LeBron James is not only a top five active player right now, he's number one. All right. Brandon, come on. LeBron James comes in, he makes everyone better. He's not making that team drastically better with his talent. They're a horrible team. They're constructed horrible. Jesus himself cannot fix that organization. It is a problem. Athletes are some of the healthiest people on the planet. Adopt a lifestyle with an all new HOA Plus app. HOA Plus delivers daily workout classes with real coaches tailored just for you. We are making it easier to train, fuel, and recover where you are. You made it! Live like an athlete. Join the tribe on HOA Plus. 2011, actually playing with your brother, uh, went to McLean Hospital for three months. And when I would peel back the layers, layers and get to the root of something, I would write. And one of the things that I wrote when I figured out, like, pretty much like the core of um, my behavior, I wrote, I won't say the whole thing, but my pain, my sadness gives me my strength. My strength ruined my mind, body, and soul. So I, I, I say that to ask you, going through what you went through growing up, how'd you get through it? Did you embrace therapy? What did you learn from it? What do you do now? Well, we didn't do therapy <laughs> when I was growing up. Therapy was like, you gotta go to therapy, you're like really crazy. So that wasn't an option, mm -hmm. really. I, the first time I went to therapy was after my parents' divorce and it was like court mandated mm -hmm. therapy and it wasn't very good. It did not give me a good, good launch into the therapy space. I mean, growing up, when you're in a space like that, you just have to kind of internalize everything. So you cope however you can. For me, I would just suppress a lot. I poured a lot of myself into sports, honestly. I'd never, I always wanted to be out of the house. So I know a lot of people can relate to that. Like, I don't want to be home. I'm going to be in the gym. I'm going to go work out. Because that's an easy excuse that also parents will give you. Like, oh, OK, like they're, they're not here because they don't want to be around me. They're, he, they're at the gym because they're working hard. Right, right. So for me, I, I had to be a support system because I wasn't the oldest, but I was the oldest kid in the house. So all of those things kind of carried over into me as an adult, obviously. So I you know, went through it like everybody does. I was cool until I wasn't. But I really didn't start getting deep, deep into therapy until my mid-20s. And now I think therapy is a very important part of life. And I'm glad that we talk about it so openly, particularly in the black community because it, there's so much stigma attached to it. And I really wish we would stop talking about it as mental health because it still makes people feel a little... Stigma. Right, it's but... Ta it's taboo, it's uncomfortable. Your brain, your emotions, all of those things are in your body. It's just health. If yeah. your brain doesn't work, nothing else works. It's the, li it's the most important part of your body, really. Your brain and your heart. And all those things are intertwined. We talk about therapy, if you bust your knee up, you're gonna go to a physical therapist. Right. Mm, so you right. can walk again. Yep. Your elbow's funny, you're gonna go see the doctor. Your throat's messed up. All these things we have no problem talking about, oh, I'm, I'm not feeling, I'm having headaches, I'm gonna go see the doctor. Oh, okay. My foot's messed up, I'm gonna go see the, see the doctor. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling a little, a little, feel a little sad, I think I'm gonna go see the doctor. Hmm. It's your health. That's right. So I'm, I'm glad that we're in a space now where we can talk about it. For me, I did not have someone to talk to about it for a long time. So it would just kind of, I mean, I was suicidal when I was very young, mm. as you know, most people tend to do when they have no outlet. And I really, in that moment, I think I was around 12 years old, when I got to that space, that's really when everything kind of turned into that motivation space that, that I was talking about, where I was like, I, there's no way I'm going out like this. Like, I'm amazing. And this can't be my story. I can't let this person and their dysfunction write my, story. Write my story. Yeah. And not that I don't know if that's a healthy way to handle it. Kept me alive, so I guess there's that. Right. But 
therapy, I think, is, is very, I think it's very important. I think it's very important for people to talk about yeah. and make it feel normal, as normal as going to the dentist, which I guess we also avoid. But, mm -hmm. you know, going to the dentist, go and get your eyes checked. It's part of your health. You can't live without your brain working properly, your emotions working properly. You know, going through that as a, as a young person really put me in a space where I needed it, and I'm very glad I got it. I wonder why the black community, we shy away from that when we got younger kids and don't talk about mental health. Like, mm. I seen my dad get killed right in front of me. I've never took a class or anything mm. until I went to McLean. But once I got rich, it was cool to like, all right, let me go call this motherfucker and cuss him out for like 15 seconds. He motherfucking gonna call me back. Like mentally, like, which sound crazy as hell probably to some people right now, but like, we didn't have a, like, and my question to you guys, like, why don't we have an outlet as younger black, black people? Like, and the white community is open. Like, it's okay to go and say, hey, mom, got, we'll, I don't we'll, understand we'll, we'll this We we'll won't got time to. Um, and it costs. We won't get, yeah, it costs, costs. But we also don't have time Medicaid, to show weakness. Medicaid will pay for it. When we show weakness where we come from, a lot of us, it's not every, the black experience is different for a lot of people. But a lot of us, when you show weakness, that equals death. No, nah, that ain't, I don't really stay, think stay that. Stay with you know. me. Stay with me here, though. I got Let's, a what lot you of killers in my neighborhood think that about cry <laughs> every day. Smoke you right now and start crying right now in front of you. After they smoke you? First off, a lot of this, this tough stuff that we talk about in, in some of the aggression is actually weakness. It's actually us cr crying out for help mm. a lot of times. Man, ah, what you, I'm angry, I'm mad. No, you said, right. you understand? But what I was trying to say, and it could be different, I could be off, mm -hmm. but if you show weakness in the hood, how you feel, sad? What? What you mean you say? Even you in saw, the locker room in football, saw, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hurt. My ankle hurt. What? What? what you better go. You can't. You disagree. You know what I'm saying? I'm so, saying, so, so I'm, you mass I'm, I'm pain, on a mental, which equals mental you mass pain. Like, not as like I, I'm playing football. Oh, well, I don't want to practice today. Just mentally. I'm just saying, like mentally, I'm gonna we'll do some like, shit. Yeah, yeah. No, like, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I'm, no, I'm not saying as far as body. Oh, we got yeah. a game. I don't want to practice on Monday because I don't, I don't feel. But like your condition, all I, I use that because we're conditioned. You said we conditionally, we're, we're set like that. We're supposed to be tough. We're supposed but like, to be I'm mass I'm pain. I'm an emotional person. It's nothing it's wrong with I'm being saying. emotional like, too. If, if me and you got a problem and I feel like it's hurt me, I might break down and cry. But you're like, going to hold, hold in and talk to me as me being your brother though. But I'm, what I'm saying is of course I'm gonna talk to you, but I'm saying I might cry. Right. Like that's just me. Right. Like, there ain't nothing wrong with that. That don't make me soft. No, it don't. No. No, you're right. Who but a lot of but, a, shit, but a lot of cats feel that way though. You never got in a fight and before you fight, you you about oh, to yeah. cry? Yeah, you I'm mad always crying. Nah, so <laughs> well, what about, about say you saw? But what about like it, like growing up when you was a kid, if, if you crying, like, you know, dads be like, man, hey, stop crying. Stop that yeah, soft. Right. So is that, is that you mean like that? It's that perfect example. I got twins. Boy and girl. Ziggy and Z, Ziggy's the girl. And this is what society does, right? And how we condition each other. They both go outside and they play, they both fall down. Mm, Got a family saying. picnic. Yeah. All the family gonna run to my little girl Ziggy and say, get up, okay, baby, you, oh, you're, or ask her, you okay? Mm -hmm. Right now I'm validating her feelings. It's okay to cry. Right. What we do to the boy, what yeah, they gonna I'm, do to I'm, my I'm, son? Get hey, up, get up, right. get up. Yeah, get your I'm doing that, yeah, straight. get up. Yeah. Get up. For sure. But what, you, what we doing is we're conditioning our boys yeah, right. yeah. to mass pain That's and telling true, them that it's not okay to a, cry. I got a mass pain because I'm the fucking provider. Yeah. That's so the problem. You talking about? That's the problem, though. That's the problem. Why is it a problem, though? Let me tell you. So something. you want the you woman? Can, hold on. You, can, me, you can still provide and still let me ask share you your emotions. Let me ask you this. Uh -oh. you, you gonna date a that's broke? The f you talking about? You smell me good. You better be about your business. I mean, you better be about your business. What's going on? Man, come on. That's like my daughter. Define broke. You know what I mean. Yeah. What you say? You know what I mean. No money to take you on a date. Nothing. He got. We can't pull up and take you out to dinner. Okay, no, no. We like nice things, bro. And like as as a female, that's what I'm teaching my daughter too. You better like nice things. You can. I mean, there's not. There's nobody like. I don't mean this in the. Uh, demeaning way. There's nothing that a man can do for me but love me. Right. I there's I can 
get myself where I need to go. She made more than me. I put. No, I got a I got a roof over my head. Like I don't. So to answer that question, I'm not gonna date somebody who's broke. But if you got a job and something you care about, that's fine. What I, I have a thought on this though. I have a thought. Yeah, don't don't encourage that. You heard what she said. It's, it has a lot to do, honestly. Again, we don't have enough time to get into all of it, but the patriarchy is the answer for like most of the questions yeah. that Thank we have. You. And it goes all the way back to really to slavery. The black family was broken up. Black wow. men were it's about to get deep. not a I mean, this is what it is though. It, yeah. it, this really are, we don't like to talk about history and history is really the reason why we are all here today. Why right. the situation is what it is today. Why there is a problem in with the black community with these particular things. Right. And why the white community has family structures that can allow men to go to therapy for a few months if they're not feeling well. And that's not provided in our community. So <laughs> much deeper complex answer to that. But I think we can't fix the there we can't no break the whole system. I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. Wait, was it was it you you was married before, right? Yeah. Was he broke? No. Mm. That's your question? No. Oh, she already answered that question. I just want—I do want to ask you. This is important for me because, like, how do you, how do you? Because uh, you're very attractive. How do you balance being attractive and sexy, but also like being respected? Because certain outfits, like, oh man, she look good, but then the corporate level is like, man, we don't want that. So how do you juggle that? I mean, look, it's, it's not my fault. I look like this. I mean, it's kind of my fault. But I'm, talking, like, I'm talking about the attractive, sexy. No, no, no. You know I'm I mean? saying like th it's you are what you are. Like, if you're an attractive person, if you're fast, you run fast. I'm an attractive person. I work on television. It's an aesthetic. It's a visual. I, I, it's a visual medium. I need more than that because. Like, okay, I'll answer I the question. I'll answer the question, Shady. It's earlier in my career. I was much more conscious of what I put out there, what I wore to certain things, mm -hmm. how I presented myself, because I didn't want that to be the impression that I'm like just using what I look like to get ahead or whatever. I'm only here because of what I look like. I never was only there because of what I looked like. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you would just hire supermodels. Like there are people whose whole career is to mm -hmm. present beautifully. Mm -hmm. They get paid a lot of money to do that. Right, They're right. called models. You would just hire a model then. What do I need to be here for? So you do have to actually do the job yeah, as well. Well, I mean I, I mean, I can't model, but I'm saying they are not doing my job. So if the requirement was only to look good, you would just hire a model. That's what models do, they model. So I will say though, like as I've gotten older, as my career has advanced, as I have a longer resume and reputation, I don't like to have to be one thing. Mm. Like if I go to the beach, I'm wearing a bikini. If I wanna share a bikini picture, I'll do that. Now my whole feed isn't gonna be bikini pictures, but I'm a woman, I'm at the beach. I look good and I'm sharing a photo. If you have a problem with that, I'm pro I probably shouldn't work for you. Like, mm. I, don't know, it's just, I, can't, I can't pretend to be something other than I am and I don't want to at this point. Right. And at this point in my life, I really don't, I'm not going to. So I think it's a balance. You have to be conscious of it. I am conscious of it. I won't pretend like I'm not. And I have many, many women friends in the, in the business and it's really all the same conversations. Like, do you do too much? Is this too much? And I gotta be honest with you, after a while, it gets kind of exhausting to placate to what feels good to men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, we, I exist for what makes me happy. If it happens to be attractive to men or do something for a man, that okay. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm like, I, I have a mirror. So, like, a, a, <laughs> I mean, a million comments about how good a look is not gonna change my self esteem. So, I think it's okay to be sexy, it's okay to be attractive. If you're wearing something seductive and you want to post that, that shouldn't be a problem. But for me, I wanted my resume to be uh, above approach that that wasn't the only conversation about me. Um, one of my favorite parts of our show and our format, when we have people on, it's like, yo, we want to talk about you, highlight you, give you your flowers, but we also want you to join the conversation, right? Uh, she's Queen P Petty, that's her name. Oh, she's Queen, you Queen Petty? Shannon gave me that nickname. What? Oh, okay, speaking. well, what's that? So if you're going to get messy, because she's in, that's her lane. <laughs> you like to get messy? I don't think I'm I a like messy person. I like to get person. messy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm a messy person. Who's messier? Because you work with both of us. 
Oh, you. Yeah. You are. I'm messier? To me? Me? Oh, him. He's messy. Is it? Is it? Oh, I mean, no, we're not talking about professionally. You're talking about like on air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, you're real messy. Like messy, messy. <laughs> <laughs> I like she, messy. She, she like more um, like right at you. Right. Like she has some takes with Aaron Rodgers. She going yeah. crazy on you. And, that, and, and that's what I said. I love that though. I love that's what I want to transition to. It's my favorite part of the show is the conversation. Let's talk a little ball, right? Lamar Jackson. What should he do? I mean, right now, he should hold out for all the money he can. The market is the market. The market is the market. And what's the market? Deshaun Watson. It's today's price. It's At least today's she price. Knows. You played with him. What you think? That's your boy? <laughs> what I think. I done told him what I think. I'm going to, you know, just sit back and chill. The f- you done proved yourself already. Why well, rush back and play on an injury that ain't even 100%? Now, if you got that bag, then go out there and risk it. But why am I going to go out there and risk it? You think that pay him, the Ravens, from being there? Um, Honestly, bro, he deserve it, but I don't think they're willing to give him the Deshaun Watson money because I feel like Deshaun Watson getting paid like that after them they're not playing a year and a half, like Cleveland was desperate. So they went out and did something not even knowing what they did, and they – up the market for a lot of my, uh, a lot of other people. You Owners, get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's like in my in my perspective, I don't think they are, bro. I think they're gonna franchise. Their owner, their owner. What their I'm owner. saying is, he ain't the only one that got paid big money that didn't perform. It ain't that though. I'm Your saying, boy in though, Denver got paid just as much. He, after he playing, after like, not playing that damn near a whole year. Yeah, I'm just saying. Deshaun Watson play better than uh, uh, old boy. You, you played over there, and you been uh, see, you've been in like the, the organization. You've been in there. Right. Do you think they can like survive without? Deshaun, or uh, Lamar Jackson, like, he run the show over there. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm going to just be real as possible because I played with him, and then when he went down, we struggled. You know, I, I give credit to uh, to T. Hunt. Two but, and four. Two and four. Yeah, you know, I give, I give credit to him, but he's not Lamar. Like, once Lamar went down, they had to change up the whole offense. 31st person offense. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Lamar, you got to think. You got to give Lamar his respect because he can run crazy. He don't take hits. He making you miss, and he got a arm out the world like the – Arm strong as hell. He's saying that he don't take hits, but he been out. He don't get but hurt. But bro, last... freak injuries. The dude got tackled know, his I knee, ankle, that. like I'm a shirt. just, I'm speaking as an owner. In the pocket, as a, in the pocket, he as an got... owner, as an owner, as an owner. Look at the record he got too. But all the quarterbacks he, get hurt. Was hurt this year. He was hurt all the last quarterbacks year. get hurt. Pat. I'm, all right. But all the he got, and he got hurt in the pocket too. I mean, I don't. I'm I don't just think saying. Joe Burrow got hit. A hundred times more and than Joe he, Brown he got hurt. He got an ACL. Yeah. Joe Brown was first year. I'm what talking about that. Don't matter though. Let that counts. Get, what you, what you I mean, say? I don't. I don't think he'll get it from the Ravens. The Ravens owner already said he hated the Deshaun Watson that. deal. He, that. he came out yeah. publicly and said, I think and they said franchise him. We know that the owners were not happy about the fact that the Browns did that. Yeah, it was stupid. Somebody's gonna pay him. The but I do. But first. I do. Thirty, the most in NFL history. Yep. But we didn't think. Oh, we didn't think Tom Brady never even got that. No, no, no. Tom Brady never ever got that. I'm gonna let her go real quick. But watch this. You say it's crazy, right? Until it happens again, and then again, and then yes. that becomes the norm. No, right, you're right. You never would have thought somebody got twenty thirty. That's why I ain't like. That's why I ain't like your language. But that's why it's gonna happen what again, language? bro. What language? Because Joe Burrow about to come up. Justin Herbert gonna come. You up. telling me Joe Burrow is not gonna get more than you said he messed up the me, market? Let me take that back. Not messed it up, but I'm just saying for. What he's, he's saying done, he messed it up. He messed it up for the owner. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Coming owners. off of what he came off of, bro. Like he was. Cleveland if, was the only team that was going to do that. No other team was going to do that. They was different. And that's the only thing that mattered. It's me. It's going to get the conversation though. right. It's only one team. What other quarterback before this this draft who fully contract, he always had Kirk a Cousins. Foot, all right now. Kirk Cousins. So are we. I played are we, with him. He was killing three, in Washington. Back to, I played with him. They franchise. He franchise, never franchise. played a contract that's not been fully guaranteed. Never. Never. Since since he been. Do we, have, do, do, do we have an I am athlete fact check? No, that's true. Hold on. It is true. Bro, listen. Bro, let me ask. I don't know. Hold on. Let me tell me. you. Listen. Let me just tell you real quick. I play with him. Since I play with him, and since he's got franchise, every year since that has been guaranteed. He was franchised in twenty. 20- 16? You talking about Kirk? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody know how to make money like Kirk. Nobody. I'm saying though, right? Everybody but should do it like Kirk does it. has been guaranteed since 2015? Yes. 2016? He had three year different, either 78 or 80 Before that. For guaranteed. I'm talking about before oh, yeah. that. Franchise. 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 But, but three years. Yeah. Three, like three years franchise. I'm talking about franchise. I'm talking about he actually had a real contract. Yo, three years. You're right. 80 million golf guaranteed. But franchise yeah. is guaranteed too, but then he did, I, I, But then he did three years fully guaranteed because he got franchised. Franchise, exactly. He did it like three times That's what I'm saying, bro. The franchise. I'm talking about every but contract he's that he's also gotten signed. very lucky that he hasn't gotten injured. Yeah, but I mean, like every contract, 
He so signed me right. fully guaranteed. I'm with Shady. I think it's it's possible. Everything's impossible until it happens. Until it happens. And it's, it's already totally happened with Deshaun. What do you think the Bengals going to do when the number one draft pick that you selected <laughs> has changed the whole franchise? You and, and he goes to Mark, he says, Deshaun Watson <laughs> is making $230 million. Exactly. You got to pay him. What you, what you think I'm going to want? I ain't going to tell you. What you think I deserve? Exactly. 300 They're going to get his but The only, thing, the only on. thing that gives me pause about it actually happening, okay. I think that's what... Lamar should ask for it. That's what I would ask for. Right. The, my only pause about it, first of all, I don't think it'll happen with the Ravens. Like, okay. I think he'll have to leave to get that. I agree, too, though. I agree with but that. But the only pause about it is these billionaires don't like to set those kind of precedents. Yeah. So after that happens with Deshaun, I really believe they were like, look, the next one that does this, Collusion. we're, we're we coming for, sure. for you. For sure. Like, Collusion? don't make this the for standard. Sure. But for instance, at the only meeting, everybody can't go in there. His mom said, don't try to get the deal done. Not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I was telling beat him, why not go and have a, a fake Brandon go in there, you know, dress up like Brandon. But it's really her. She's sitting beside him. Damn. Hey, look, this is the deal. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? It might be. A face. Your, he talking what, about a face. What's your agent? Who? Who's Drew Rosenhaus. Drew, Rose Drew Rosenhaus. Maybe it might be him. Uh, just, maybe just it might hire, be shady. Just hire a, a method Can't be Brandon going in there. Long story short, do you, do you uh, feel like his mom is affecting him? Yeah, and that's what I'm asking. If he do had you an think agent, if he had he a proper agent signed? or... Everyone likes to say that, but... In this situation, no. If he was, if he was like a, if he was at the end of his career, right? He's in year thirteen. He's trying to get a one-year deal somewhere. He's trying to get workouts or something. That's when you need an agent. It's not that I'm saying you don't need an agent. I have an agent. I'm not against agents. I like having an agent. They right. do things I don't want to do. Right. But if she's going to work as his agent in this situation, this is the most ideal time to do it mm -hmm. because he's going to get paid regardless. Yeah. regardless. And it's not like she's look like totally. you're going to have a lawyer look over everything. Like yeah. it's not like you're just going in there right. like it's totally different. That's than a great football. point. I don't think he's ever had an agent. No, he he's never had an his agent. His mom has been his representation. Have so, you ever got paid? He's the first round. Wait, wait, how many contracts you had? Watch, watch this. How many contracts you had? You had a lot, right? Seven or eight. How many contracts you had? A couple? A couple contracts? Four. What are you I talking about the money to save No, 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 no. Hear me out. What's the, what was the easiest time you got a deal? What's the easiest? Out of all them contracts you had, what was the easiest was money you got? The, the second contract. Second contract. It's the easiest. It's the they easiest want one. you. Yes. So you're telling me why he need a, a different representation for him other right. than his mom? He don't. But let, what I'm let saying me is, tell you this. these owners, you know how they work, bro. Watch this, though. They, you know how the game They is. want her son. He said it don't matter, though. I'm going to go back to you. It don't matter. Okay, hold on. Why, why, why sure. it don't matter to you? And I'm going to tell you why I do Because they want the product. Let me tell you why it don't matter. Watch this. I'm going to. Let me Go tell ahead. you why. Because I'm Lamar Jackson. Okay, I just right. want MVP. Yep. Right. I want the best. All right. The market is this. Right. This is what this is what it is. Okay. If I'm free right now, right. I can get this. That means this is the market. Right. So now my mom walks in. She says that. Or I say that. Right. Don't matter. Don't matter. It don't matter. Right. And now what you do, you sit back and you don't play. Oh, well. we, we give we give up the leverage as players. If he don't play, watch what happens. Okay, listen up. Listen, you listen. know how many more Lamar right, Jackson are going to be? Hold on, hold on. Now I want to hear him because Jack, Jack, hold on, let me hear what right. Jackson. So you're saying, you saying it don't matter because he's one of the hottest quarterbacks. He done done numbers for them. He done right. been, his record, what, at least 80% win. Right. 78%. 80%. He got, he got the two highest uh, uh, winning percentage under Patrick Mahomes. Yes, he him. So your point is saying he's valuable and I got to sign him. Right. Let's not forget, because mm -hmm. we talking about an agent, because my man just asked her, is him not having the agent, his mom playing the role of being the agent, messing him up from getting paid. That's what I These asked. owners, bro, come on. When they go do them deals with them agents, you don't think they getting kicked back? I got, oh, I looked out for you on this deal, so when it come back around, look out for me on that. Yeah, them them slaps. It don't matter, them, no. The, the third, no, fourth contract no. with Joy said, what did the Joy say? What did the Joy say? Yeah, that's that. cool, but what did Joy say? When you need you to get that. a workout, that's when the <laughs> team is <laughs> locked in with Listen, these owners bro, and GMs. Only, bro. Teams, bro. only teams that ain't doing it is the Cleveland. The Bengals, the little, the little league, the little, you, you fool. The well, big market, you, 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 you fool. You telling me you that Jerry it. Jones is not sitting in the room with the Giants exactly. owners, with the Jets owners? Hey, look, man, what y'all think? Doing? Uh, we, I think they're doing that. We got an owners meeting. Yeah, they what is. The yeah, is. The I think they're doing that. I think they're they doing are. That. At the end of the day, though, the what quarterback is the most important position on the field, and Lamar Jackson plays it at a high level. And so, I agree so with while, all of so that. So while some owners might feel the way that you're saying, and I definitely don't disagree, somebody. Wants Lamar Jackson more than it's they care about it. It's only about take his, two, two first-rounders. His ass gonna be up right now. We'll find out in a couple of days. So earlier, I asked you a question, but I said, answer it later. 
have you made it? I forgot you asked me that. <laughs> yeah, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I feel like I made it for what I originally set out to do. So I have more I want to do. I have more I feel like I need to do. And I still have that anxiety that I haven't done enough or that it'll all go away or, you know, that I, I, I'll i fail yeah, in I'm some way. I know it won't. it won't. You got it. I, think, I feel like you got it. It won't. But yes, I will say yes. It feels very weird and scary to say that, though, because I'm an aspirational person and I have so much more I want to do. But I do think it's important in life when you get to certain, when you do have certain accomplishments or you reach goals that you celebrate and appreciate them. Because everything is fleeting, right? Nothing's forever. Everything's going to change. We're a day older right. than we were yesterday. Yeah, right, right, right. So, I mean, you really got to appreciate moments in life. One of the things I did when the Super Bowl was in Miami in 2020, we were down there with, with Fox. We had a huge set yeah. on, on the beach and everything. And I, 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 Super Bowl was really crazy. Like, it's a crazy week. We just <laughs> came off of it. Parties, there's stuff going on everywhere. You're doing the show. It's very chaotic. It's very easy to get lost in everything that's happening. And like, it's over before you even realize it. But I was really intentional. Like, I'm going to appreciate this moment. I'm not going to really go out. Like, if I go out, I'm not going to drink a lot. Like, I want to I wanna really like soak in this full circle moment. I, I went to school in Miami. I started my career there. And now, all these years later, I'm on this massive set on this big show on What's Fox. Your What's your boy? What's your boy? <laughs> What's your boy? I, I work crazy. And, uh, you know, I want to appreciate that moment so, and, and, and be present. It's so hard for us to be present, especially now. Like, you get on the phone, people are in your face, there's a lot going on. So, so yes, I will say I feel like I've made it. Um, and, I, and another reason why I feel like I made it is now I feel like I have an obligation to give back, right? right. And if you haven't really accomplished much, what do you have to offer to other people? Right, right, right. So that I think is that I think is an important thing to recognize when you get when you get to a certain level, when you make it to the NFL, when you get your big contract, when you are OG. You know what I mean? To give back to other people. So so yes, I will I will humbly say yes, but I feel like I still have a lot to do. And let me say this. Um, do you feel like work is a stress reliever for you? And the reason why I'm asking you that is because going back to what Pac-Man talked about earlier. You know, I lost my dad at an early age, my first year in the league. Um, and if I didn't have football to lean on when I was going through that, like, I think I would have probably, I wouldn't be sitting here in front of y'all face right now. I feel like going, we, we go through things in life and, you know, sometimes work is our happy place. So mm. do you feel like work for you? Because I know you said you grew up and things were a certain way growing up. Um, do you credit work as like a stress reliever and for you to get everything off your plate and just focus on work and have fun? Yeah, it definitely is. Especially when you can create an environment where you're working with good people, you know, and you enjoy what you do. Mm -hmm. For me, it definitely is. I like to work. I like being at work. I like pouring into my passion. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, and I can definitely answer this because when I first came to Fox, when I first came to LA, I wasn't working. Like wow. I was working for Fox but we didn't have a show. Mm. So I went from doing a four hour morning drive radio show in Miami to having nothing to do mm -hmm. for months mm -hmm. at a time because we hadn't launched Undisputed. Right. And I was going nuts. <laughs> like I needed something to do mm -hmm. every day. I am a very routine person. Right. I eat the same thing for breakfast. I like to park in the same parking spot every day. I wear sweats to work every day so I don't have to think about what I'm wearing. Like I mm -hmm. really like the Steve Jobs it. So to not have anything to do or pour myself into was very, it was a stressful time. So yes, I, I would definitely say that. What kind of Rolex is that? This is not a Rolex. We're not there yet. <laughs> I haven't made it there yet. <laughs> I haven't made a Rolex yet. No, this is an Invicta. My brother gave me this for his nice. wedding. Love it. Right, thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Was great. Great. We had to fight to get a meal, yeah, wrongfully accused, we had to fight to get a bill, that's why we right to get a deal, he on the team, he gotta eat, you know, despite your skills, fat. keep it riding for the fam, you gotta light the wooden wheel, straight up, but in the past bad, work up in the trash bag, I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class, yeah. and my family needed bread, I had to come correct, that's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas, 